What's good with it, y'all? So, final Monday Night Raw, man. It's going to be the final review before we get to the Clash at the Castle. This was the go-home show Monday Night Raw before Clash at the Castle. A lot to get into, man. Overall, really good episode of Monday Night Raw. I don't know if I've said this on camera before. I know I've probably put it in the comment section, but me personally, I think Raw has been putting on some of the better shows overall before and even after WrestleMania better than SmackDown because tonight was just another prime example of Raw, granted it's three hours long, it flew by fast. Like It started at 8 o'clock and then it ended right at 11 o'clock and the show just like flew by fast. SmackDown, on the other hand, you know, granted it's two hours. SmackDown, for the most part, outside of like the Cody stuff, is mostly filler, or at least it comes across as filler in a way to me. But the one thing that I will always give SmackDown over the edge over on Raw, regardless if Raw is the better show or not, SmackDown is two hours long. SmackDown still is two hours long, and um, obviously. They'll never, most likely, never move Raw to three hours, even with them going to Netflix next year. But the main picture, obviously, you see here Drew McIntyre and Damian Priest. Drew McIntyre took on Finn Balor in the main event. They put in the stipulation at the beginning of the show when Damian Priest and Drew had the little promo that if Drew was to win, then all the Judgment Day cannot be at ringside in during the Clash of the Castle match. So they will not be in ringside because Drew McIntyre beat Finn Balor. What was a really good matchup, man? I ain't going to lie to you. It was a really good main event. But speaking of the Judgment Day, man, the story with Liv Morgan is continuing. Liv Morgan is continuing to have her way with the Judgment Day. And she is not wasting away. She meant what she said. She wants to take everything from Rhea Ripley. And... I feel like she ain't not only getting ready to take Dominic away, but she's trapping Finn as well. You know, Liv was in the locker room. They were she was in their little playhouse and she gave Dom the hotel room. So like, hey, you know, whenever you're ready, I'm at the hotel room. Here's the card. Like, I got you know, let's let's do it. Let's have our own little wrestling match. And then obviously the boys talked about it. And right as they were getting ready to exit, Finn had took the hotel room key while no one else was looking and basically took it for himself. So Dom ain't going to go to the hotel room, but Finn Balor is. So I think Finn Balor definitely is going to head to the hotel room and have a little wrestling match with Liv Morgan, you know, to kind of heal himself from the beating that he got from uh, Drew McIntyre. And you know how Liv Morgan is. She'll probably take care of the demon tonight, but let's move on with that. Uh, we had a really good match. Probably the next big thing going on on Raw tonight was Ron Breaker and Ilya Dragunov. And when we got towards the ending for a second, I was like, oh, they might go the route of a double count out. But Braun straight up massacred Ilya Dragunov's ribs, and he beats Dragunov in what was a really, really good match. I'm not going to lie to you. But Ricochet came out. We made a whole video about it. It's been the big topic coming into the night. Ricochet's final night in the WWE. Um, Braun Breaker destroyed Ricochet. He smashed him into the, into the truck. And then he took Ricochet and obviously just threw him into the car and, you know, Ricochet's been put in an ambulance, had to get taken to a hospital. So, honestly, with the way it seemed, how it was, it really did seem like tonight was the final uh, night that we're going to see Ricochet in the WWE. And this was basically Ricochet's send-off to the WWE. And if this is truly the end for Ricochet, if he's truly gone from WWE, then, hey, what a solid career he had in the company. I don't believe he got fully buried or anything like that, um, you know, but like I said, I explained it all in the video I uploaded this past weekend, but we'll see what Ricochet does next, you know, this summer, and, um, you know, fair play for Samantha Irvin supporting her, her soon-to-be husband, you know, joining him, that was really nice, but you saw uh, Lava Valkyrie take out E and EO, 
in the rematch, that was pretty good. You had the six-man tag with, you know, Strowman, Ray, and the LWO taking on the Judgment Day. That was really good. And Liv, again, playing a role into that. So, overall, this was this was actually a pretty good Monday Night Raw. The only downside I would say of the show was, was the um, tag team match with the women. You know, Shayna versus, and then them versus Alba Fire. And then, of course, you had... Um, Excuse me, you had um uh forgetting the segment for some reason, but nevertheless, this is overall a really good episode of Monday Night Raw, but you had the ALP, there we go, the ALP versus the versus the awesome truth for the tag team titles. I ain't gonna lie to y'all, kind of surprised ALP lost y'all. I feel like ALP kind of should have won here. No, I feel like they should have won, excuse me. You know, ALP, I don't know, this Final Testament group so far right now. It's like, I don't want to say it, but it kind of feels like they're already on their last legs here. I mean, you have Karen Cross trying to recruit, you know, uh, I want to say Xavier. And then, of course, you know, you still have Paul London being there, which is like, well, if Scarlett's there and Karrion's there, then, you know, what is he doing? But I don't know. But overall, really good episode of Monday Night Raw, Clash of the Castles this weekend. So we'll see what happens, man, on uh, Friday Night SmackDown. So.